Hi guys, welcome to or back to my channel. I'm Sylvie. Today I am so excited to bring you guys this long awaited makeup tutorial. I haven't done a bridal makeup tutorial in like a year and a half and I feel like my technique and products that I love, everything has changed so much. And this is sort of like a, if I were to get married again, how would I do my wedding makeup? And this is exactly it. I so wish I could go back in time. I'm gonna insert a picture right here of what my wedding makeup was. I actually did my own wedding makeup before I even became a makeup artist. I like binge watch DIY bridal makeup tutorials and I practiced for months to be able to figure out what I wanted to do for my bridal makeup. Even then, my technique wasn't that great. I did love my makeup, but I would definitely do it differently. My biggest tip for choosing your makeup look for your wedding day is not to veer too far from what you would normally do. You wanna do a makeup that is like what you love and what you would normally do, but just a bit more amped up, a bit more ethereal, a bit more flawless and perfected. But you know, if you know you're a glam girl and you wanna do that, go right ahead, it's your wedding day, have fun. But for the general population, you don't want to do something that is new to you but i would always say go in and have your trial have two trials change up your look during your trial to see what you like save those pinterest pictures and when you're choosing a makeup artist you want to choose someone whose style of makeup reflects what you want on your wedding day you don't want to pick just some whatever makeup artist and then expect them to do a look that's not in their specialty so whether you're choosing a makeup artist or you're planning on doing your own makeup which you absolutely can do and this is coming from a makeup artist because i did my own when i didn't even know how to do makeup very well at least and before we move on to the tutorial please remember to like this video subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell so you know when my videos go up just a disclaimer i've had so much struggles with my lighting and my sound for this video i got new mics but i'm still figuring out how to use them and they ran out of battery so did one of my lights so i'm sorry about that but yeah other than that i hope you guys enjoy this video let's move on the first step is skin prep you ideally want to begin this at least two to six months before your wedding day but if you're in a pinch you could begin a basic skincare routine even up to one week before your wedding day and do not incorporate a new ingredient at least a month before your wedding day and that includes treatments like lasers and chemical peels if anything goes wrong you want to make sure you have enough time to heal your skin that being said sticking to a basic skincare routine like cleansing moisturizing and exfoliating a few times a week is going to take your skin such a long way in being prepped for your wedding day. For this bridal makeup look, I started off by exfoliating with this Sephora Resurfacing Peel Mask. You leave this on your skin for 10 minutes and it just does a gentle exfoliation on your face to get any dead skin cells off and smooth out any texture that you have. I have very dry skin and this is how I layer my skin products for bridal makeup. I use a glycerin-based rose water spray and this is from the brand Heritage. I mist this all over my face to dampen my skin, which is gonna improve absorption of your serums and moisturizers. Next, I use the I'm From Rice Serum. This is my daily hydration serum. This is going to moisturize the deeper layers of your skin and make your skin a bit more plump. Next, I go in with a very light textured facial oil. The one that I like to use is jojoba oil. You can use any brand that you like. I just use a small amount and I lightly pat that onto my face. And because jojoba mimics your skin's sebum and your skin's natural oils, it absorbs in very well into your skin. So I like to use this before going in with a heavier moisturizer. And lastly, I like to lock everything in with the La Roche-Posay Lipiker Balm Lotion. This is a lotion, but it is so rich and thick and creamy that it works amazingly at locking in moisture, softening the skin, and protecting the skin barrier. Next step is primers. I personally don't like using primers when I'm doing my own makeup. When you do proper skin prep, it actually acts like the best primer for your makeup. But if you have a tried and true primer, you're welcome to go ahead and use that. When I use primers on clients, I only like to use them for specific problems like larger pores or for oil controls. If you want to, you could always go in and use an illuminating primer. Today, just because I wanna illuminate a little bit of shine in the center of my face, I'm gonna use a little bit of this tiny sample of the Smashbox Photo Finish Mattifying Primer. I'm just gonna take that over the hot spots where I tend to get the most shiny and I don't want it reflecting in photos. Also, don't forget lip balm. I'm just using the Flexitol lip balm today. This is actually the best lip balm I've probably ever used and it's only 
like five dollars on amazon and it heals cracked lips so fast and i've been loving this for bridal makeup i always like to start with the eyes first i feel like there's already a lot going on that day and just to be stress-free doing the eye makeup first ensures that if you make any mistakes you don't have a full phase of makeup on and you have eyeshadow or mascara or whatever fall on your face and then you have to go back and fix it that would just kill me so I'm going to start with the eyes. If you have oily eyelids or just for good measure, you want to go ahead and wipe off your eyelids with just a tissue or something to make sure that you get any like extra moisturizer off of them. Anything to help the longevity of your eye makeup. First thing I'm going to do is go in with an eye primer. Today I'm using the Milani eye primer and really just quickly taking it with my fingers. You need a small amount over the top and blend it out. And once it starts getting close to drying, I just start patting and not rubbing because I feel like that pushes the product into the skin and keeps it from like drying or flaking off weird. Next, I'm going to conceal my eyelids and I'm going to go in with the NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer in the shade Ginger. And I just took a small amount on my hand and I'm taking this in a sort of fluffy concealer brush and I love using brushes for concealer because I feel like I can control the application better and not get too much and keep it where I want to keep it. So I'm just tapping it on on top of that primer so that I don't move anything around. And because that primer is going to grip, patting it on ensures that it goes on really smoothly. So as you can see, it's just concealing and blending out beautifully. And I'm also taking that concealer out a bit because those are all the areas that I'm going to be blending my eyeshadow and any other product too. Shade Ginger is actually a perfect shade for concealing and correcting. If you have slightly dark circles or darkness on your eyelids, you can see it just concealed and brightened amazingly. For the eyelids, I really do like keeping the concealer not that much darker than my actual skin tone because I just feel like unless you're doing crazy bright colors, Having concealer that's too much brighter than your skin tone can make it look a little bit fake and too stark in contrast. And then once you use your brush, you can go ahead with a sponge and smooth it out even more and press everything in. And then I'm going to set that down with a pressed powder. I'm going in with the Charlotte Tilbury Flawless Finish Powder in the shade 2. So I am sort of concentrating that more on the crease and under the brow bone. Really the areas that I'm going to do the most blending. You don't have to use too much. Use just enough till it's not very tacky anymore. So like first I was pressing it down and then I can start going in circular motions when I feel that the tackiness has worn off. Before I start the eye makeup, I'm going to fill in my eyebrows a bit so I can frame the eye area and get a better idea of what I'm going to do. So I'm taking the e.l.f. Bite Size Palette in the shade I Love You A Latte and I'm going to take this deep brown shade. Honestly, you can use any technique and any product that you already love and use for your brows. This is just what works for me to fill in my very, very sparse brows and give them a lot of definition and texture. So I generally start with just a dark brown powder. This is just what I happen to have right now and I will lightly fill that in and create the shape that I want and then brush the product through. So I overfucked my eyebrows when I was a teenager and the thin brows thing was a trend. Unfortunately, they did us dirty, but I used to actually pluck the center of my brows here. I had a unibrow. I used to think I looked like a caveman, so I got rid of all my brows here and they never grow back anymore. So I had these weird short brows. So I always have to bring in my brow products a little bit further in so I look like a normal person. So I've gone ahead and filled in the other side and then next I go in with the NYX brow pen in the shade Espresso. And here I'll just start flicking some hair like strokes through my brows. And the brows always look a little bit crazy if you don't have makeup on, but because of all the makeup that we're going to put on afterwards, it's all going to balance out, I promise. So I just took my Patrick Ta bronzer in the shade She's Bronzed. And I took that powder shade and I'm actually going to use that to build up my eyeshadow. I'm taking a small amount and I'm going to start to build that up in the crease. And I'm sort of just patting and stippling it on before I go and buff it. Because I want to deposit the color in the places that I want it the most and then blend it when I'm ready to. And when I've got the color where I want it, I'm going to just start using that brush. And I'm holding it at the end so I'm not applying too much pressure. And I'm just going to lightly buff that out. And I am doing sort of like a mix between circular motions and windshield wiper motions. And I just want to create a very, very light wash of color into the crease. 
And then once most of that color is blended out on the outside here, I slowly start to bring it in. And bringing the bronzer in really shapes out the eye and makes it look bigger and makes it look more defined. So I always blend in the excess into this inner area here and because we're not using such a dark color it's not going to make your eyes look very dark or raccoony it's just going to make it look really nice and defined i'm going to do the other side and i'll be right back and then i'm taking the same bronzer on a slightly smaller fluffy brush i'm sort of packing that onto the outer corner here it's not going to show up as much right now but we're just building up that base and then i will actually mix that bronzer with a little bit like the tiniest little bit of this deep brown if you have a more medium brown color you could totally go ahead and use that this is just what i want to use right now because i want to keep things simple and not add on a million products so i just took a little bit onto my brush here and i'm going to start sort of bringing that from the outside and down i'm sort of like tapering it down into the lash line here and whatever is left i sort of move it up here okay so this is where i actually lost my audio for the video so i'm just doing this post edit so i'm concentrating that medium shade to the outer third of the eye and my aim here is to actually create a sort of diffused wing liner look except it's without the liner and we're creating a winged effect with that medium brown shadow so i deposit it where i want the most concentration of the shadow to be then i sweep it inwards and sweep it outwards to just diffuse the color out. And then with my fluffiest brush with no extra product on it, I'm just sweeping it through the crease to blend all the products together. For the lids, I'm going in with the L'Oreal Infallible Eyeshadow in the shade Amber Rush. You guys, this is such an OG shade. This is honestly one of the most beautiful rose gold shadows you will find ever, let alone at the drugstore. I'm taking that on a medium shadow brush and tapping off the excess and I'm just lightly pressing that on onto the lid space where we don't have eyeshadow. And remember that we didn't actually set that part of the eye with powder. We only really set the crease and brow area so it left the lid tacky so that this pigment could stick on better. And then I'm taking my brush with that medium brown shadow and just diffusing out the edges. And then again, taking my fluffiest brush through the crease to blend all the colors together. Here, I've taken the darkest brown shadow from my e.l.f. eyeshadow palette and I'm taking that on a very thin eyeliner brush and I'm concentrating that onto my lash line. We're going to build up a smoky wing liner with a brown eyeshadow and I generally find this softer than using black liner. You can see that it already created a beautiful definition to the lash line and then turning the pointy end of my brush outward i'm slowly just stamping on the line of where i want the wing to be and then you just use that little stamp as a guideline to complete your wing and then here i'm turning the point of the brush inward so i can flick that wing out and make it really diffused at the end. So that's the eyeshadow liner done. So once this is done, I like to sort of lock it in and I'm actually gonna use the same brow pen that I used. So I love that it's in a dark brown shade and it's just gonna complement the tone. And I like to just deepen that a little bit right at the lash line, not on the entire liner smoked out, but just closest to the lash line. This is just gonna add a little bit more intensity and it's gonna show up really well in photos. And last step for the eyeshadow, I am gonna go in with like a glitter topper and I'm gonna go in with the ColourPop Super Shock Shadow in the shade, a little quirky. It's sort of like this bronzy shade. I'm just gonna stamp that lightly, just in that lid space. Basically the same area that I went with the Amber Rush and it might not be showing up here very well, but you see how it just gives a little bit more dimension to the side than it did before we put on the sparkles? It's nothing crazy and not too glimmery, but it's just going to be enough to give you that little special sparkle. Now I'm going to curl my eyelashes. Do not skip this step. It's so important. You want to give your eyes the most love on your wedding day. On your wedding day, I don't care if you're a cry or not, you're going to want to use waterproof mascara. Today, I'm just using the L'Oreal Lash Paradise. This one is not waterproof, so I can take it off easy tonight. But on your wedding day, you want to use waterproof. 
So I just did a couple coats of mascara, nothing crazy. You can see how amazing of a difference it makes to curl your lashes. It just gives you such a lift. Now you don't have to be super perfect with your mascara because we are going to go in with false lashes. You don't have to use false lashes on your wedding day, but depending on how different your face looks with the makeup on and how much lashes you naturally have, you may or may not want to use it and you can always just at the end. On a wedding day, I always recommend using some individual lashes that you could put on on like the outer corners of the eyes so that's what we're gonna do today so i've just gone ahead and popped some lash glue on the back of my hand i personally like using black lash glue so it doesn't show as much but you can go ahead and use whatever this is always easier on a client than it is doing it on yourself but you just want to come in on the top just on the corner there so that's all the lashes i use tens from the outer part to the middle and then I used eight millimeters from the middle to the inner corner of the eyes. I love how beautiful and fluttery this is. I can't wait to see this with the look completed. I'm gonna do the inner corner highlight and I'm going to your Backstage Glow Face Palette and I'm gonna mix the gold and the white. I'm just gonna pop a little bit of brightness into the inner part of the tear duct here. You see this? That just gives you this like open, angelic look. I will sit under the brow bone well let's move on to the face now i'm not gonna lie i always find doing eyes so boring and i just try to get it done as fast as i can so i'm really excited to start the complexion because it is your wedding day if you have any hyperpigmentation or blemishes this is where you want to go ahead and start correcting i'm going to go in with the nard concealer in the shade biscuit this is a medium peachy tone and i'm just taking that on a small brush and i'm going to target exactly where i need it so that's the shadows on the creases of my mouth and under my chin sort of get this mustache as well and i'm going to press that in my sponge also going to get these shadows under my eyes on a day-to-day -day basis i would not do correcting and do all these steps and layers but on your wedding day these light layers are really going to ensure that your makeup lasts looks amazing looks flawless and i'm just Still have a little bit of melasma in some spots here i think it was from pregnancy but i honestly was so bad with using sunscreen while i was pregnant too so i've been a bit of my side light just died so i had to just readjust my main light here and i hope everything looks consistent don't worry guys i will one day figure out this technology next i'm going to go in with my foundation now house labs foundation has been my new favorite but on your wedding day, I absolutely cannot not use the Giorgio Armani Luminous Silk Foundation. This is in the shade 6. So I'm taking it on the back of my hand and I'm using a dense foundation brush to just cover the entire brush first. And this is what's going to give you a very even coverage. And a really good one. So I'm sort of starting at the center of my face and I'm blending out to the edges as I need it. This foundation is so beautiful. It's going to make you look flawless. It photographs beautifully, so it's amazing for a wedding day. And don't forget the ears, because you don't want to walk around with like, red ears or different colored ears in your face. Do you see how perfect my skin looks compared to that side? It looks like a little filter and like you just look like a porcelain doll or something. I feel like that already blended out so well, but I'm just going to press it in with my sponge just because that is my habit to do and you really want to push the products into your skin so that they're becoming one with your face and not just sitting on top of your skin and you also don't want to drag your foundation brush because again if you've done color correcting underneath you're just going to move it around and also pouncing or stippling the product on is going to keep the coverage so this is great if you're trying to build up coverage whatever is left over i'm going to take it under the chin I'm going to bring it down slightly down my neck. This foundation is a really amazing shade match for me. So I don't have to actually go all the way down my neck like I do with some foundation. Once it all in again. And I'm not putting too much foundation or too much coverage for foundation on my face because you can always go in with concealer and add coverage where you need to instead of creating like this entire e base. Or you can use a very thin layer of a really full coverage foundation like Estee Lauder double wear. I love that one. The next we're going to conceal and I'm going to go back in with my NARS concealer in the shade Ginger. What I like to do is stamp on 
coverage where I need it the most first, which is the inner corners, the eyes, and I'm sort of putting on the coverage and blending as I go, and I'll work that back this way. You want to take a concealer that is closer to your skin tone shade, and I'm taking this in a slightly peachier shade to conceal and correct at the same time. So I'm really just taking that in the areas that I actually need to conceal and correct. Around my chin, in that my line, in the center here. And now that my concealer's been sitting for a bit, I'm going to start to blend out the edges first. And I want to diffuse the edges the most, obviously. And when I get to the edge here, this is where you can use your concealer to actually clean up your eyeliner if you've made a mess. You could actually go in with that smaller brush and just up under here. And then I'm going to keep dumping this on and really just pushing the product. And as you do the stipple motion, it's going to blend the concealer for you. And then whatever's left over, I can just bring it up and conceal any other areas that I need to. And I'm really trying to keep the skin not too overwhelmed. So if I don't need coverage somewhere, I'm not going to put it there. And this is where I lost my audio cam, so please just bear with me. So once I'm done the under eyes, I'm just taking whatever is left and sweeping that through my forehead, really the center of the forehead. And this is such a sheer amount here. And then pushing everything in with a sponge here, you can see how flawless the face looks. Nothing looks cakey or heavy. It just looks like I have very perfected skin. Next for bronzer, I'm going in with my favorite Patrick Ta Bronzer Duo. I'm taking that cream bronzer first and dabbing off the excess on the back of my hand. And then I take it on the Patrick Ta Contour Brush and I'm just stamping that on in the areas that I want to contour. You want to keep the contour placement a little bit higher on the face to lift the cheekbones. So just starting right beneath the cheeks and the brush really does a lot of the blending for you. And then you can take a sponge and blend in the edges there. You want the contour to look soft and diffused and not harsh at all. Sorry, that's my baby in the background. So stamping that on again and I'm really taking small amounts at a time. It's always easier to build up your product than to take it away. And then I'm blending that onto the temple and the forehead. And then I'm defining the jawline here by taking it underneath the jaw. I'm not starting it at the edge of the jaw because then you'll have products sort of move up and you'll get a stripe of contour, which we don't want. So I'm applying it underneath the jaw and the residual product just kind of travels up over the edge. And you can see what a difference it makes from one side to the other. Your jaw just looks way more defined. And I'm also taking it down the grooves of my neck there. And then I'm contouring around the lips. This is going to give me a fuller look for the lips without using a lot of lip liner. So we're just building up that definition with the cream contour first. You can see the fullness that it just gave to that one side. And now I'm going in on the other side and then bringing back definition to the center of my face where my nose is. You don't want to skip this part. So just taking a bit of contour to the bottom of the nose to lift it and then down the sides of my nose to give it that slimming effect. And then I'm also taking it over the tip there just because I personally like that button nose effect. And then I like to take a little bit of a lighter colored concealer. This is the NARS concealer in the shade Custard. And I'm placing a little bit down the bridge of my nose and onto the forehead. And then into the inner corners of the eyes here. And a little bit down the center of my chin and around my nose whole point of going in with a lighter concealer is to highlight the center of the face. You really want to bring back balance and that three-dimensional look and you are creating more definition and it really looks very bright and angelic. And it simply just brings an extra dimension of glow to your whole look. Now that we've let the concealer sit and set on the center of the nose, we can go ahead and blend that out with a sponge very lightly so it doesn't move around so much. And then doing the same with the other side of the sponge to soften the contour. So next I'm going to go in with my e.l.f. 
Halo Glow Liquid Filter. This is in the shade for medium. I'm gonna just pop this on the high points here. A little bit on the chin. And just in some areas where I want to add a bit of glow. I don't want to bring too much glow to the center of the face because you don't want to look greasy. You want to look like you're glowing. So I want to avoid like this area where you would just end up looking like an oil slick, honestly. For blush, I had to choose my all-time favorite, Patrick Ta Blush Duo in the shade She's Black. To me, this is the perfect neutral blush for medium brown skin tones. It's got just the right amount of warmth and just the right amount of hint of pinky. But I also recently got the shade Not Too Much, and this is slightly lighter, slightly more pink. Both would be an amazing option. This is gonna work amazingly for lighter skin tones. But if you want a slightly more pink tone, you could go with this one because it's a little bit softer. But today I'm gonna go in with She's Blushing. Today I'm gonna do the cream first. So I'm starting the cream blush in the center of my cheekbone. I do want to keep it high and lifted. Okay, and then when most of the product has been deposited, then I'll sort of start bringing it up more. I don't want to bring it up too high, but that's about where I want to keep it. And you want to keep things really lifted and lovely. Of course, if it's your style, you bring it in a bit more with the heck. Maybe it will because I love that. Okay, so that's what the shade looks like. It's just the most perfect, neutral, blushy, pinky, I don't know. It's even a little bit ready. It's just the most perfect blush. And then I always take blush up on the temple, a little bit over the forehead. This is just whatever is remaining, and so on the chin and down the neck. The purpose of this is to just keep all the tones of the face uniform so you don't have like clown face going on where you just have all this blush on your cheeks. And I'll even take a little bit up into the crease here. We are in the home stretch. I now I'm going to go ahead and set the concealed areas of my face and I'm going to use the same Charlotte Tilbury pressed powder except this time I'm going in a shade lighter. This is in the shade and you just want to make sure that there's no creasing underneath the eye because you don't want to set the creases. So this is what's going to give you a flawless under eye. So I'm going in with a generous amount to make sure everything is very well. So I'm just setting the center of my face, center of the forehead, and around the mouth. Chin. And now I'm going to set all of my creams with the powder bronzer. So I'm going into that powder shade in the Patrick Ta bronzer and I'm taking that on an angled blush brush and I'm going to stamp that. I'm stamping it on so that it doesn't move my product. It just sets it really well. And you can be okay with being pretty generous with your bronzer and blush, even a little bit more than you would do in how you want it to look in real life, because you want it to show up in photos as well. So I'm using that to set all the areas that I've done the cream. And then I'm just gonna go and get the sides of the nose there, pinch my brush, and I don't really need to be perfect over here. And then you can just take your concealer brush I have no extra products here. And you can clean up under the contour. And then I'm gonna do my highlighter before my blush. I never like having a blinding highlight on and I don't even use a highlighter on a daily basis. So for my wedding day, I would use it in between my bronzer and my blush. So it's a little bit sandwiched in there and it looks like the glow is coming from sort of within instead of sitting on top of the face. So I'm actually gonna mix this gold and the pink shade here and I'm gonna keep it up here. I'm not gonna bring it in too far. I have already a little bit glow going on there but we're gonna take care of that later. I'm just bringing that in the center of the cheekbone here and then you can even bring it up this way to catch the light and then I'm gonna take it over the cupid's bow as well. And actually before I do blush, I am going to go in and add more powder. So I'm taking my Huda Beauty loose powder in the shade Peach Pie and I'm going to use that to do like a baby bake. So I'm taking that on a tiny puff, placing that on that inner part of my face. 
and bring that down the side and over the smile lines probably gonna take the center of my face my nose and whatever is left over I'm just gonna pop that into the center on my forehead and my chin do you see how blurred that gets immediately and I'm gonna take a little bit underneath the contour as well so just from the corner of the mouth up and I don't even take it all the way just the slightest amount and while that sits there I'm not gonna let it sit there for too long I'm gonna take the powder from the Patrick Town blush and we're gonna go in and stamp that over the cream blush areas This blush is super pigmented, so I'm actually going in and wiping off the excess. And again, hitting the temple, chin, and I'm even gonna take it over the center of the nose, and then I'm gonna dust off the excess powder there. And you can even use some of your pressed powder to dust that off. And this is why it's nice to have two different colored press powders. Obviously you don't have to, but it really does help in getting the colors right. And then this is where whatever is left on my blush brush, I will just diffuse out the edges of the blush with. And then of course you can diffuse the edges again with your sponge and just put all the colors together. And then last step, I like to take some of that blush and run it through the crease. Just tie in all the colors together. And we're not going to forget the bottom of the eyelid, so I'm going to take my Patrick Tao bronzer and just cover my bottom lids in that. And then I'm going to do that medium brown mix with that dark brown eyeshadow I had and the bronzer. And I'm gonna just blend it into the lash and I'm not bringing it in all the way because I don't want to close up my eyes okay so just in the outer outer half and then I'm gonna take a little bit of mascara onto a cleaner spoolie and take it on the bottom lashes because I don't want to get too much on the bottom lashes all at once and I'm just gonna blow real lashes with the falsies and I'm just tapping it into the roots of the lashes. I'm gonna go ahead and finish up my brow. So I'm gonna go in with my Bay Brow Brow Wax. This stuff is amazing. It holds my stubborn brows up in place all day. And I do have a discount code with them and I will link that down below if you guys are interested. This is why I leave my brows till the end. Because things just get wonky during the makeup process. Do you see the difference of like how amazingly that holds up. So I just went ahead and touched up any of the brow hairs that looked like I was missing with my NYX brow pen. And now we're gonna move on to the lips and I'm going in with my NYX lip liner in the shade Natural and I'm gonna use that to fill in the entire lips. It is just the most beautiful neutral pink color. And then with my Rimmel Brownie Pie lip liner, as always, I'm gonna contour the lips. I remember we already contoured around the lips with the cream contour so I don't have to do a whole lot here. I'm actually keeping it right on my natural lip line. And while I'm overlining my cupid's bow, I'm still keeping the cupid's bow shape because you don't want to lose that natural, however much natural look you can keep as possible. For lipstick, I'm going in with my all-time favorite this past year, the Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk Lipstick in medium shade. I know this is a tiny sample and I'm like completely done almost, but it is the stunning shade. So I really used to be into like the new beigey lip tones for bridal makeup, but I really think having like a medium rose brings like a very healthy youthful look for and then brides. last but not least if you want a gloss you can add a gloss my favorite one is super underrated and it's the l'oreal brilliant signature shiny lip stain and this is in the shade be determined i kid you not this is the shiniest glossy stain ever and 
it literally lasts all day like a stain which is crazy and then to set everything in don't forget your setting spray today i'm using the mac fix plus stay over setting spray at last that is the finished bridal makeup look i just love how soft yet glam yet still natural the skin is and i feel like this is the perfect makeup that i would love if i were to get married again i had so much fun filming this bridal makeup tutorial for you guys if you have any questions leave it in the comments down below and i know that getting married is such a crazy expensive time so if you want another video on this look using affordable or drugstore makeup products please leave it in the comments down below let me know i would love to get one out for you let me know if you're gonna try out this makeup to figure out your wedding day makeup look as always i'll see you guys again soon bye